Good morning, good morning, good morning. Actually, it's quite a late morning, isn't it? So it's quarter past nine, it's a late start for me. Well, it's a late start for me because I'm not going, I, I'm not, <clears throat> shouldn't be working today. I'm on my way to work, but today wasn't scheduled to be a work day. But <clears throat> employees, please take note. When you're self-employed or a business owner, you can't have a day off. <laughs> There's no such thing as a day off. Isn't the weather lovely? Look, it's really, we've had a load of wet weather and it's just starting to struggle to be a bit sunny. It's really nice. Oh. So, so why are you going back to work angry, you ask? Good question. Two things have happened, right. You know my dental technician ran off to join the um, the circus, which is what we call border control, or uh, border farce. And uh, so, he said to me, if you ever get stuck, you know, because we, we put this lab in, didn't we? And so I'm, I've been doing, I've been pouring casts and trimming casts and uh, doing uh, special trays, bite blocks, ordering teeth, loads of fun. The two aspects of denture construction that we have problem with are um, setups and uh, processing. So we can do um, we can do simple setups, but I'm still not very confident on uh, difficult setups. For example, uh, class three setups where you've got a few of the teeth are present or extremely overclosed setups or um, uh, full falls, you know, which are really, you know, something that you, you sort of uh, comes with. The first sort of thousand full falls are the most difficult, but then, you know, you might not get, get a thousand full falls if you're single-handed and you're just doing your own setups, you know. So, Anyway, he's free today, so um, um, I assume he's still registered as a technician. I mean, he, he's only just left, so he probably is. If he isn't, then uh, he's a process worker. And if he isn't a process worker, then he's just gonna sit, sit by my side and offer hints and tips on how I should do the job, you know? But the main thing is that I've rung him this morning, he's free. He's going to come over and he's going to give me some advice on uh, on how to do these setups. So my idea of uh, having a lion, I, I, we're out the window anyway because I have to take the kids to school on a Wednesday. So I had to get up at normal time, take them to school and then come home. And now I'm going all the way back into work. Um, anyway, I'm not saying all this because I, want, I need to moan at someone or... I want you to realise, you know, how rubbish my life is. Because honestly, I don't see it as rubbish. I'm very, uh, pr feel privileged that I've got him to come and help me, you know. I've got him to fall back on. I've got him to uh, to uh, guide me if, when I need guidance. Uh, a man who's immensely skilled. And with massive experience. And possibly not the, on the standard side is the only side he drops down. But that's because he's, for his whole life, he's never been ever rewarded to pick up the, the very high standards that uh, we aspire to. But I'll I'll look after the standards, um, and he can look after the uh, advising on the technicalities, can't he? Anyway, our new receptionist, who was very, very quick, uh, you know, she's been working for us for a week now, having waited three weeks, for her to start, we've now waited, uh, we've now had her for a week and two days, and she sent us an email today saying she resigns. So, so what's emerging from this, all right? What's emerging from this is resilience. What's emerging from this is having some spare, spare capacity. You know, we have to, uh, I'm gonna go back down to me and a nurse again. Uh, but using an automated automated systems that uh, are, you know, phone calls are the only things that we uh, 
struggle to deal with. Uh, you know, like, and even then, if we're in the middle of taking a tooth out, we're not going to. We've got uh, financial resiliency. We've got enough money in the bank probably to get us through a whole month of not working. Um, so that's good. Um, and uh, uh, Lou is, is uh, as I know, has been, you know, uh, bedrock in terms of uh, service level provision. Um, so I know that we can go back to me and Lou just working together while we go through the um, the crazy business of trying to recruit another another receptionist. But you know, I'm I can't say I'm disappointed in in Stacy for resigning because uh, you know I'm a great fan of Ayn Rand and everyone's selfish. They have to do what what is best for them. Look, I can't expect her to work for me, even if she doesn't think it's the right thing to do for her, from her point of view. So, you know, if she wants to resign, she should resign. Um, but obviously, part of me is a little bit frustrated because I'm like, uh, I'm going to have to go through the whole process of recruiting again. Although now I know, you know, having just been through it so recently, I think I could probably certainly um, optimize that recruitment process um, better than, you know, better than I did last time because we used Indeed and uh, we, we could probably just tighten the timescales down a bit. Um, and so we know we'll probably get another receptionist and there'll probably be nice receptionists and everything. But uh, it's just a case of um, time, you know, it's just my time. Time is valuable and so I, I've just, you know, I, but then on the other hand, overcoming uh, problems and uh, challenges, and even time consuming ones, is part of your mentality as a self-employed person. You're just like, okay, that's a challenge. How am I gonna, you know, we're gonna work just the two of us for a few more weeks. That means slight like, changes to the book. We might have to put a recording message on the on the phone, saying to people, please don't ring at the moment, but you can still contact us by email. Um, and uh, and uh, do a bit of, um, get on the old recruitment site. But I would rather obviously have a receptionist who does like and want to work for us than one who has resigned because they didn't want to work for us. My only criticism really was, you know, in the, in the brevity of the uh, uh, departure because she literally just, she intended to resign yesterday, didn't say anything, uh, left her locker key in the locker with her door key and then... Um, Went home, went to sleep, woke up this morning and at nine o'clock sent us a message saying, I'm not coming back, you know, my keys are in my locker. So, so it's premeditated without, um, how can I put it? There's two courtesies that are lacking in that. One is um, the courtesy to discuss it with us beforehand if she did have any issues. And secondly, the courtesy just to let us know at the time, you know, rather than just say, oh, I've, Oh, by the way, I resigned yesterday. <laughs> you know, and do it by email. Uh, it's but then with new employees, right? You're, you're. I mean, she's literally been working with us for a week. She said she was happy. She seemed to be happy. Um, you know, we tend to do things together at lunchtime, like eat our lunch together, or. Um, you know, go out for lunch together to a cafe or something. And just this week, she was just a little bit reluctant. She didn't want to come out to lunch with us on Monday. And then she said that she got um, problems on Tuesday. She needed to go shopping. So, uh, you know, she, she, she limped off and came back. All these are like very, very subtle signs that she's not bonding with the practice that she's... Uh, you know, she's 
But then that's that's quite normal. I'm not saying that uh, people have to eat lunch with us or anything. I'm just saying that uh, they were they were with hindsight little subtle ways that she was saying, you know, I'm I'm non-self, you know, this great self, non-self. She's saying like I'm, you know, you guys are. I, I don't see me and you guys being a, being a you know like a, a group an item. <coughs> Which is a shame because uh, she would have been good for us. I was I was quite happy with her, but it's always difficult, isn't it? If you're happy with someone and they're not happy with you, then uh, you know that's as young teenagers we have to learn to get over that, don't we? You know, and you know my old saying: if it's right for them, then it's right for you. So uh, you know, good. I think now I think she should resign. She has resigned. Uh, You also uh, you also have to consider to the, to the extent that uh, you know she's got external uh, issues that she hasn't uh, fully come to terms with. Like for example, she came from a very busy surgery where they were you know and she had quite an important job and and probably lots of friends, which she made no bones that she still kept in touch with them and used to tell them, you know, how we did things, etc, etc. And so she's still in touch with them. So so she hasn't actually really left that job yet. You know, she hasn't really left that circle of um, employees and, and friends. And, you know, I wouldn't be at all surprised to hear that she's just gone straight back to working for them. I wouldn't be surprised to hear that they haven't said to her a lot, you know, uh, you know, the place has fallen apart. The week you've been away, we're going to double your salary or whatever if you come back. And she said, all right, then, yeah, actually, I do miss the camaraderie and I certainly need the money. So, uh, yeah, I will. I'll come back. So, and, and then the other aspect is, like, you know, personal life. Um, your employees are for the most part they've got children they've got husbands the husbands have got opinions uh, their uh, children have needs sometimes special needs um, they're doing uh, what young parents all the things young parents normally do for example they are buying and selling houses um, and uh, doing things like that so they might be you know they're, they're getting their children into school particular school they might want to get their children into they've got all the worries of uh, of, of life and you know if you're in the middle of selling a house and getting your child into a new school uh, especially a child with special needs then you might feel that um, having to cope with a new job is and possibly, you know, a, a, a temporary drop in in pay <coughs> uh, might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Or you might just be, you know, having a nervous breakdown and decide that you don't want to work for a bit while you uh, restore your mental health in the vernacular. So the short and the long of it is that you nobody knows nobody knows employees are to a certain extent a mystery within a riddle within an enigma and it's your job just to uh, employ them isn't it really at the end of the day your only obligation is to get them set up on the uh, on your payroll system to pay them accurately and on time remit their taxes and then uh, and process them when they say they want to leave. So, anyway, it's a bit of a shame because she did come recommended to us, you know, by the technician who's uh, who's coming in today. So I shall be sure to mention him that. Uh... Oh, you cheeky so and so.
AD54 Kilo Yankee Vector. They do that, these uh, people, they, you know, when there's two lanes down to one, they can't merge in turn or uh, queue. They uh, decide to get, I think they can get an advantage by nipping up the side. Some sort of Darwinian 1% advantage. Although, I mean, you know, if I was driving a Volkswagen Polo, I would, you know, that's a bit ironic, isn't it, really, in terms of Darwinian advantage. It's obviously not working, is it, that policy? Mind you, I can't talk, you know, I'm driving the Peugeot Partner van, so. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, so really, as I say, the moral of the, uh, the moral of the, of the whole thing is, uh, have a bit of resilience, you know, have someone who can call on for advice, have a plan for downsizing your surgery temporarily, if you do have a death, or a something, you know, you know what they say, fail to plan, is to plan to fail. So, so I think that's about it, really. I'm not going to blether on. Uh, I'm not going to blether on any more than that. I'll, um, perhaps I'll talk to you on the way back. It's the budget today, so uh, Jeremy Hunt, who's due to run in the London Marathon, is obviously fit as a butcher's dog. Um, he's doing all the right things, you know. He's doing all the austerity things. He's put tax up to the highest since World War Two. He's. Uh, making noises about cutting public expenditure, completely forgetting that uh, elections are auctions of future promises, and that more than half the people in the UK are employed by the public sector. So, I mean, but, I mean people like me, we, we, I support, I don't support Jeremy Hunt, but I support the, his approach in as Chancellor, which has been reduced public spending because there is no such thing as public spending. The, the, the government has no money. The government is not your friend. All the only money that the government spends is money it has to get from you. So reduce public spending, and um, and then you can start reducing taxes. But the only problem is that um, they won't reduce public spending, and the deficit will carry on, and the debt will carry on racking up. And there, there, there are two ideas, the uh, overt, which is uh, to grow the economy so that they outgrow the debt. This is like, you know, finding out that you owe £100,000 on your credit card and deciding that you, uh, you're therefore going to get a job that pays you £2 million a year so that you can pay it off. That, that, that cockamamie idea, <laughs> that's, the, that's the overt side of the policy increase gross domestic product to outgrow the debt and ignoring the fact completely that the debt has always grown faster than the than the, the gross domestic product in the economy so turn a circle into a square that's that policy um, and um, and the covert one which is just to debase the currency which is to print so much money so many pounds and they've increased the number of pounds by 28% in the last four years, that it costs £9,000 to buy a ham sandwich. And uh, because the money becomes, you know, debased and worthless. And in that case, then, if you owe £100,000 on your credit card, and that's the price of a season ticket to London for a year, then who the hell cares, you know? Providing, and, and this is the big providing, providing that you're able to um, adjust your income accordingly. Because it's all very well saying you're gonna debase your currency and debase your debt, if you're at the same time you're debasing your earnings. So for example, as dentists, we are quite well placed. We are, we can, I mean, not in that, working within the National Health Service, we can't, but those of us working in the private sector, which I think is the majority of us now, can adjust our fees. So if they debase the currency 10%, then we can put the fees up 10%. Whereas, um, 
if you can't um, adjust your income, for example, and you're a pensioner, and uh, or you're living off your savings or your stock dividends or something, uh, and you're just being paid in debased pounds, then you're in trouble, aren't you? And a lot of people are like that, you know, a lot of people have got um, stocks and shares that, uh, you know, and, and they're living off of dividends and savings and, and some people are even sort of trying to live off money in deposit accounts and stuff like that. I think it's, you know, hasn't been possible for about 200 years. Those are the days when you could get 3% on treasury gilts and then live a high old life off the proceeds. Anyway, you don't know what I'm talking about. You have not got the first idea of what I'm talking about. So why am I telling you? Anyway. I'm at work now, so uh, I'll sign off. I'll sign off. I'll say goodbye. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Duh. Let me just get that in front of I normally clap three times at the end of these so I can synchronise the sound with the audio. But it's not a good idea unless you're down a little quiet road or you're stopped. There you go. That's what I used to synchronise it. I do it at the beginning as well, but I always cut it off so you don't see it there. There's a little tip for you. All right. Bye. See you soon. Bye.